glad that this shit is over. Love we had stays on my mind But the love we had stays on my mind Ooh, yes, Drew Hill, yes, what's going on, y'all? This be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV And we are here for my review of the finale Season finale, season three finale of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Y'all, when I tell y'all, as much as I love this show, one of my favorite shows to review, I'm glad this shit is over, honey. I cannot tell y'all how happy I am that this shit is fucking over, okay? Because Mel and Martell has ruined this show for me. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm just happy that this shit is over and we finna get right on into this review because I'm happy to even be doing a review on this. But you know... For the next three weeks after this, we're going to be into the reunion, and then all, and then it's all going to be over after that, y'all. So, good show, but child, y'all done ran my nerves down through the, through the damn dumps, I'm telling you. But we about to get into this episode, so let's get into it. Well, at this point, Melody is getting ready for her premiere party, okay? She's premiering the video for her song, Telltale Signs, alright? And um, she's just getting everything prepared, you know, just trying to have a good little party and everything like that. Have a splashy party, invite all her peoples to the party, and just so they can just, you know, celebrate her, her video, her music, and all of her moves, okay? So then Tiffany comes in, and um, you know, Tiffany is there to help Mel um, pick out some new interns for her company. Um, all of them go to the same college that she went to, and she's just excited to interview the people. But in the meantime, in between time, of course they got to talk about the mess. So, um, you know, Tiffany and Melody were talking about Letitia and how Letitia was being very intrusive when she was asking Tiffany a bunch of questions. She was saying that Tiffany, um, she, Tiffany was saying that Letitia was, wasn't really trying to get to know her. She was just trying to get into some mess, pretty much. Like, she wasn't interested in knowing who she is as a person. She just wanted to get into, want to get too involved into the mess. But I'm looking at it, I'm just like, well, Tiffany... Haven't you been doing that from the very beginning? Like you brought your ass on this show and you talking about being transparent and we got to be honest about everything and all this other stuff. And you ask all these inappropriate questions and say a bunch of inappropriate stuff in a group of people. But yet someone gives you that same energy, whether Letitia is annoying as hell. That is facts. We already know that Tisha is annoying as hell. We already know that she's probably my least favorite person on this damn show, okay? I live to drag her all day, every day. But Letitia wasn't doing nothing but giving you the same damn energy that you give everybody else. The same energy that you've given everybody else since you brought your ass on the show. Now it's not fun when a rabbit got the gun. I don't know how y'all feel about it. But Letitia was being messy, intrusive, all of that. But Tiffany has been the queen of doing that shit since she came on this show. And I find it very hard for myself to feel sorry for her ass. I'm, I'm, I'm just being real. I don't feel sorry for Tiffany. Period. I just don't because... She brought this shit on herself. She wanted to come on here and keep it all the way a book and keep it real and all this other stuff. But yet when somebody asks her to keep it real, she don't want to do that. She's talking about it's not the right time. Everything you've ever done on this damn show from the very beginning wasn't at the right time. But you still did it anyway. So fuck out of here, Tiffany. Tiffany full of shit, y'all. Y'all can't tell me nothing. Tiffany full of shit, I'm telling you. But then they start getting ready to, you know, interview all of the interns. And then we move on to the next thing, which is the day of the premiere. Now, Mel is telling her assistant, listen, I know that they're interns, I know that they're college students, but don't go easy on them. Let them, whip them into shape. Let them know that this is something important and they got to do the job right. They got to show me why I'm hiring them and show me why they got the um, position. They need to know that, they need to know that, they need to know that. And sometimes you got to do that. Like... You know, if I ever get to a point to where I need somebody to help me out with certain things or whatever because I'm going to put it into existence, no matter what people got to say, I'm going to put it into existence. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm still down here on YouTube. Yes, I still work a 9 to 5. Yes, indeed. And yes, I'm still trying to work my way up after all these years. But if I keep putting into it and putting it in the damn um, universe that things will change, they will. And I don't give a fuck what nobody got to say about this shit. You know what I mean? Like, people like to, like to look down their nose and all this other stuff because I've been doing this for so long. But... 
Things are finally starting to move. And opportunities are always coming my way. Like Carlos King be watching my shit. Carlos King watched the fucking interview that I did with Latrice and Antoinette. Like he was watching my shit. There are people looking at me around here. Like people that I may not even be aware of that's looking at me. So I know what I got to do. And I know the, the things that I have to do to, to um, elevate, to continue to elevate. Because I feel like my channel is elevating still. It's still, a, it's still in the elevating stages. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm no longer stagnant anymore. There's always some ideas and I'm always going for what I know. So it is what it is. So yeah. Yeah, um, I, I would want to have that same approach that Melody has if I ever came to a point to where I needed something like that. So everybody's at the party. They want to know if Martell is coming. Like Destiny said, I don't know why the hell y'all even worried about whether or not Martell is coming or not. Why would Melody want Martell to be as something that is so important to her? Like... This is about her song, a song that he got a problem with, a video on a song that he got a problem with. Why the fuck would she invite him? And on top of that, they're not on good terms. Every time they're around each other, it's always World War Three. Nobody wants that in their vicinity. So if she don't invite him, that is absolutely okay. She ain't got to invite him. That's just really how I feel about the situation. Like She ain't got to invite him if she don't want to. I don't know why the fuck they'd be so worried about whether or not he's coming or not. Why does he need to come? But that's because y'all, I feel like a lot of y'all secretly enjoy this drama that goes on between Melody and Martell. But let me tell you something. I can speak for everybody that watching this damn show. We are not enjoying it. We're sick of it. It was entertaining at first, but now it's draining. We're sick of it and we're tired of seeing it. Let Martell say where the fuck he at at this point in time. We don't need him coming through, starting a bunch of shit, blowing up the spot, and we don't need Melody manipulative ass to play into the shit and start starting shit too. Because like I said, they both toxic in their own ways and they both star shit. They both do. Don't let them fool you. Neither one of them. That's all I'm saying. So Dottie Peoples come in and now she wants to be the relationship guru and give everybody advice on how to keep a man, how to keep their husband, how to keep everybody satisfied and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, Miss Wanda, do you got a man of your own or do you got somebody else's man? Because you just give me one of them southern aunties that's known for sleeping with everybody's husband and getting $5 out of the tip. Like, that's what I really believe. And then, like I say, every time I see you on my screen, child, I can smell the pump it up through the damn screen. I can smell the spritz through the damn screen. I'm pretty sure you used to wear waterfalls and crinkles and shit in your damn head back in the 90s. I'm pretty I'm sure of it. I, oh, I'm definitely sure of it. And because you still wear a friend Roll. You still wear them damn like you still wear them same old ass southern hairdos like they've been out of style a long damn time ago. I I know this just seems like I'm just roasting the hell out of Miss Wanda, which I am, and I I know it looks like I'm giving her something that's well deserved, which I am because she needs to be roasted. Like I'm sick of Wanda. Wanda always. Saying something about somebody's men, somebody's relationship, what they need to do to keep their man and all that stuff. When she couldn't even keep a man of her damn own. Let's just be 100% real. Where's Wanda's man? She says she got a husband and a boyfriend. That's what she say. But where he at? Well, where either one of them at? Because they need to keep your ass busy. Clearly, you're not busy enough because you're too busy being a busy body in somebody else's motherfucking business, okay? You need to mind your own. Go get a new hairstyle, child. I'm um, like, like your hair in that confessional is the best you ever look. Because all that other shit, that pump it up shit that you got, I don't know what it is. But like I said, you still wear French rolls. I don't know nobody that still wear French rolls. It may be uh five percent of the damn viewing public that still wear French rolls. I ain't seen no French roll in fucking years. A French roll in the bank. You probably wore fi probably wore finger waves and crinkles and all types of damn shit back in the day, back in the gap. You know them damn southern hairstyles. I remember. I remember seeing them crinkles all the damn time around here. I know you still wear them. I know you still wear them, girl. I know you still wear them. But, child, uh, Dottie Peoples is a mess, and she need to mind her own damn business trying to tell um, Destiny what she need to do to keep a man. Like, girl, bye, because I wouldn't take no advice from Dottie for nothing. Like, I wouldn't let her teach me my damn ABCs and one, two, threes, let alone get some advice about a damn man. Who? What? And who else? Girl, please, this is not Dr. Love, honey. But then the conversation takes a turn when it was all about side chicks and husbands and, you know, mistresses and shit like that. And, of course, that just gives Kimmy the blues every time. At this point, Kimmy, I don't think anyone really cares if you were a side chick or not. Like, all this protesting and digesting and flow testing and hot testing and cold testing and everything else testing... 
We don't give a fuck at this point. Like, if you was a side chick, okay, you was a side chick. If you wasn't a side chick, okay, we feel your pain. We understand. We don't want... I, I mean, at the same time, I do understand that you don't want that to be on your record, so to speak. Because whenever that's on your record, you know what I mean, everybody's gonna, that's all you're gonna be looked at as a home record. Regardless of the fact that you marry now, people gonna always say, well, she took that man husband child. You know she took that man, she, not that man husband, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I'm still half this edible. Um, you know she took that woman's husband, you know that's, that's how she got him, because she took that woman's husband child. Yeah, girl, did you know that? See, 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 Maurice was with Kyle first. But then when they was going through their issues, you know, Kimmy swooped her little ass in and took that woman's husband, child. That's all they're going to do. And being that y'all live in Huntsville, Alabama, and I know that's a small-ass town, I'm sure that's what everybody's talking about. So I get it. You don't want to be classified as a side chick. No one wants to be classified as that. But at this point, you done brought your friend on the show and all this other stuff and everybody's upset. You know, uh, Letitia was talking about Patricia was married to Marceau's other brother and all of that other stuff first. And, you know, she seems not to like Patricia too much or whatever because when her name came up, she started rolling her neck. Kimberly went as far as to bring Pat Patricia on the show to back up her claims on whether or not she was a side chick or not. I don't see why it's, I don't see why, why it's important to bring it up. I don't see why. I mean, like I said, I get it. You don't want that to be on your record. You don't want to be known as a, as a labeled as a, as a home record. I understand, but you protesting a bit too much and you know people love to say when you protest a lot, that means you got something to hide. I don't necessarily think you have anything to have but you're doing too much to prove a point you ain't got to prove shit to me or nobody else if you was a side chick riding on that dick that's your business if you wasn't then okay fuck it who cares that's how that's how i feel about it like yeah she gets way too sensitive over this but you know i'm not in her situation so i don't understand but they have been calling her a side chick for as long as i've been watching this show and um kai will even you know put that narrative out there that she was indeed a side a side chick that's what she did so i don't know y'all so let me know what you think in, in, in the comment section, chat. So Wanda walks over to Vanessa. She wants to have a conversation with Vanessa. Now, the last time they seen each other was at that race, and they did not come off on a good foot. They were arguing, and Vanessa called Wanda ghetto, and she said that she don't do fucking ghetto. She just don't do ghetto, and it's just what it is. She don't do ghetto. She just don't do ghetto. Um, but that, but Wanda said she wanted to have a civilized conversation. Vanessa just got her and got her together real swiftly and professionally. She said. You know, just don't come to me with that. Um, if you want to have a conversation with me, have it in private. Like, you know, I don't talk about your personal business. You shouldn't be talking about mine. I don't know what you do in your relationship, so you shouldn't be talking about mine. I don't do those things, whatever. Wanda really wasn't trying to have no conversation with Van. She just wanted somebody to argue with. You know, Wanda loves the drama every time she turns around, every time she comes on screen. She looking for some damn drama. Like I said, she wanted on messy ass uh Southern aunties that love mess, love to be with somebody else's man and just love drama, period. That's why she be with the other folks, man, because she like to keep up, kick up the mess. That's what she likes to do, and I'm just not here for it, girl. Like, just go somewhere and sit down, uh, Wanda. It's never that serious. Go somewhere and sit down, girl. Go somewhere and sit down. Let's go somewhere and sit down, child. Let's do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just let it be. You know what I'm saying? Just going on, girl. That's all I gotta say about uh about Van and Wanda. That's all that really was, child. I just, I just feel like this, girl. Like, at the end of the day, Van did the right thing by not dealing with it like that. So Tiffany is now in the hot seat. Tiffany um feels like Tiffany called Letitia messy, and I just like okay, so it's it was okay for you to be messy, but it's not okay for everybody else to be messy. No, bitch. This is not the way it's going to work out. It, that's just not the way it works at all. Like, I just feel like Tiffany is full of it. She, it's okay for her to ask all these different questions. It's okay for her to be up in everybody else's business. But as soon as somebody puts her in that same spot, she don't want to deal with it. She feel like it's not appropriate. She feels like it's this. She feel like it's that. It's the same shit you've been doing to everybody else. It's just that now they're pulling a the you on you and you can't handle that. And you're just going to have to handle it. Seriously. You're just going to have to. Because you put yourself in that predicament. When you appointed, appointed yourself to be the one to ask all the hard questions. Oh no. You don't get to ask me shit. Okay. I don't even fucking know you. So therefore you want to get upset because they're now asking you questions. No Tiffany. No. You're talking about being transparent. But you don't want to be transparent. 
Tiffany asks you some questions, the same type of questions you would ask everybody else, but now you can't, you can't handle it now. Now you can't handle it because everybody else is doing the same thing to you that you've done to everybody else. Tiffany, bye. Like, stop. This whole gaslighting shit you like to do, I can't fuck with. So then we watch the video. The song is hot. The video is hot. Melody just can't sing to me, but that's just my opinion. But um, it was a good song, good video. And then after the video was over, Destiny decides to pull Mel to the side. And you know, normally I'm team Destiny, but Destiny was doing way too much. Like, girl, you could you couldn't wait till after this to say this to her. You couldn't wait. You couldn't do it beforehand. You want to sit up here and talk about your village? And this ain't about you. Destiny. It's not about you. It's about Mel and her video, something that she's worked hard for. And you can't seem to not take your own head out your own ass to sit here and listen and, and, and just celebrate your friend. The one that you call your friend, the one that you want to have want to have your back so hard, but you're not having her back right now. Like you're not having her back right now, girl. You're not. You're making this whole thing about you when you need to stop trying to make it all about you because it's not. It's about her. That's what it's about. Not you, but her. That's what it's about. Like, girl, are you serious right now? You can't be. You seriously can't be, girl. You cannot be serious. Like, I understand why Mel was so fucking irritated. Because I definitely would have been irritated by Destiny ass. Like, but that's just a self-centered ass person to do some shit like that. Like, Destiny, girl, go sit down. After all of that, uh, Martel shows up. Pulls Melody to the side and he actually congratulates Melody to give her some positive words of encouragement and all of that stuff. And they even shook on it. And that was pretty much the end of the episode. I'm glad that it ended on a nice note. I'm glad that it ended on a positive note. But child, this reunion is coming up and it's a three-part reunion. And baby, your boy cannot wait to see that. With that being said, child, this be your boy Scott by Nature. Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I drop a video. Also, be sure to follow me on all forms of social media. My Twitter and my IG will be down below. If you want me to follow you back on IG, just hit me up in the DMs with the hashtag message Team Scotty, and I will definitely follow you back. With that being said, you guys, your boy is out of here until my next video. I'll holler at you later. Peace out. We can always find our way to a fun moment, even in the shady bunch.